Every city claims to have them, and every city will tell you that theirs is the best. Most larger places will lay claim to having quite a few. I am of course speaking of secret bars. The kind of bars with no name out front, where a secret password is required to get in. This is what started my obsession and may have cost me my soul. The year was 2001. I had turned 21 earlier that year and had already done up all the new freedoms that come with that age. I had done bars, casinos, you name it. At first it was so cool, because for years I had felt like a kid, like some wet behind the ears idiot that the rest of the world sort of just patted on the head. Even after turning 21, things remained annoying. People would hear that I was 21 and treat me not like an adult, but as a new adult, like a grown-up that still needed grown-ups. I was annoyed. I worked downtown in a dreary office job inputting data. The nice thing about it though were my hours, 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. For a single guy in his early 20s it was perfect. I got to sleep in every day and I would get off of work just in time to take the quick walk from the New Orleans Central Business District cross over Canal Street and BAM! I was in the French Quarter, land of booze and women. Lots of fun times were spent down there. But as I said, even that began to get boring. Really boring. So, I began to research secret bars. I found a few right away, and most of them were just as boring as the regular bars. One in particular, called Mythique, was located up a narrow stairwell, accessible only through a tiny door located under the bar downstairs. Once I got up there though, it was just another bar. The clientele was a bit more pretentious. Most of them thought they were the second coming of Lestat, but in the end, it was the same thing. A bar, drinks, people, and usually crappy music. I remember one night I was at home in my tiny apartment using Metacrawler, remember this was 2001, and searching for more secrets in my city that I was now old enough to exploit. I kept finding links to the same boring places I always went to. Then my email binged, or I should say announced, you've got mail. I clicked open my email and saw the heading for the message read, secret bar. Now I was sure if I had asked anyone on my AOL buddy list for help and I didn't recognize the sender. I figured maybe I was in a chat room one night and asked around, but I figured it was worth a check. The email was simple and short, and read something like this. Secret New Orleans Bar. Looking for a journey. Not afraid of hell? Not too shy for heaven? Then come visit us. Be in Jackson Square tonight at 2 a.m. Wear a black shirt and gray pants and have a cup of coffee in your hand. Seat yourself in the third bench. This is your only invitation. Miss it and you will never be invited again. P.S. Come alone. Tell no one. That was the end of the email. I was lucky that my job required me to wear a suit because it just so happened that I had a pair of grey slacks. I pulled on a black t-shirt and realized that I actually looked pretty good. I figured this could be a prank but even if it was, even it if turned out to be nothing, I would go out and have a few drinks anyway, maybe even get laid. I didn't have to go into work the next day so this night could turn out to be fun anyway. However, I may have been a bored, idiotic 21 year old but I wasn't totally stupid. This could also be a trick, a trap, or something worse. So I called my best friend Mike up. I told him that I was going out with some strangers from work, and that I wasn't sure about them. I told him I would call him by 4 AM, and if I didn't, for him to call and check up on me. I told him I would be in the quarter. Mike had to be up for work at 4 AM, so it wouldn't put him out of his way to call me when he got up. I left my apartment at around 1.30 AM. I only lived about 15 minutes from downtown, but I figured I would make sure I was on time. By 1.55 AM, I was sitting on the third bench in Jackson Square, sipping my coffee, and waiting. At 2 AM, the cathedral bells rang out twice and I received a tap on the shoulder. A gorgeous woman was sitting next to me and I thought to myself, this is too cliche to be real. To me, she seemed like a walking cliche for a hidden bar goth girl, mid-twenties, really hot. Yeah, she was from the bar, I knew it from the start. I'm Jody, said the woman. Well, at least you're not Raven or Death or Lilith or some other stereotypical goth name, I replied. But I did so with a smile. She returned my smile with one of her own. Nope, always been Jody and you must be Kurt, right? She knew my name, very cool. Of course my name was on my AOL profile where the email was sent so if this was her attempt at a cool trick, I was one step ahead. 
Yes, Kurt, that's me. I guess you're here to show me to the secret bar? I asked. Only if you're ready to journey to hell or heaven, depending on your tastes. We like to consider this to be the first back out point for new clients. You can decline the invitation now and go home or to some other bar or wherever you'd like. Only be warned that no other invitation will ever come to you again. I considered this and decided that it was already after 2 a.m. I was out dressed and full of coffee. I wanted to see this place. Lead on Miss Jody, I replied. She smiled and opened the doors. A small door sat at the end of a wooden hallway that looked like it may have been built around the time of the pyramids. There were no lights, I could only see by the small electric light in the elevator and the light coming from the door ahead. I walked forward and as soon as I stepped off of the elevator, the heat hit me. It wasn't so hot that I couldn't take it, but if anyone has ever experienced being in an attic on a really hot day, with no ventilation, then you'll have an idea of how this felt. The air was thick beyond description. I instantly was covered in sweat and I knew that if I stayed in this hallway for too long, I would pass out. I turned to look back and saw the elevator already heading back up. From what I could see, there was no button to call it back down either. I guess Jody wasn't kidding when she said that was my last chance to back out. I crossed my fingers that the bar would be air conditioned and walked forward into the light. What happened over the next couple of hours is largely a blur. I will tell it as best I can. I entered that bar. It was small, very small, about the size of a bedroom. There was a single wooden bar, three bar stools pushed up to it, and three small tables in the corner area. The room was poorly lit. Only a small light bulb hanging from the cord was providing the light. However, it was well lit enough to see everything, and sitting right on the bulb seemed the most logical. There was a small shelf behind the bar, typical setup, liquor bottles in front of a mirror. There were five others in this room plus the bartender. I saw a gothic girl sitting at one of the tables sipping a drink with a rather plain-dressed man. There were two gentlemen at the other table. One was wearing a business suit, the other was wearing that awful cowboy attire that was popular in almost all walks of life, even secret bars. There was another woman, average in appearance, probably in her mid-thirties, smoking at the other side of the bar. Of course there was me too, so that completed our little circle. There was no music playing. The walls were old wood, oak maybe. The bartender, now he was a classic. White shirt, black pants, suspenders and bow tie. Like something out of the roaring twenties. It was still hot too, not as bad as the hallway, but pretty awful. Liquor would only make me hotter, but I was here now. I figured I would test the waters. Now as for liquor I saw no bottles that I could recognize, none were labeled, there was no beer either, no name brands, no cash register, no bar mat, this place was as simple as you could want. After a moment the bartender spoke to me. Welcome to hell, he announced smiling. Cool name sort of expected it though. I tried not to sound rude or pretentious. They had put on a great show tonight but calling the place hell, really? Too predictable. Well, it translates differently in lots of places, hell is just the way you know it. Shall I call it something else? He asked, and he didn't seem to be joking or annoyed. No, hell is fine, how about a drink? Jack and Coke please, I said. No Jack here and no Coke either, he answered at once. What do you have then? I asked. Well, most people down here have a drink we call regret. I can also serve you loneliness. Or if you're feeling particularly bold, our house special is damnation. Wow, you guys are really playing up the hell thing. Okay, serve me some regret, please. He handed me a drink poured from a brown bottle. It tasted amazing too. I figured it to be a bourbon, and wished I had some coke to mix it with. Apparently there was no ice here. I chuckled, of course not, ice in hell. What am I thinking? The drink was tasty though, and the buzz hit me quick. I ordered up a loneliness and began to look around at my fellow patrons. None of them seemed to even notice me. The goth girl was cute though, so I picked up my drink and decided to walk over to her, when suddenly the woman sitting at the bar began to whimper. I am so thirsty, can I please have some water? She seemed to be pleading this to the bartender. No ma'am, he replied with that same stupid grin. No water in hell, not even a small amount. Have another cigarette though, wash it down with some hard liquor. No more smoking, my mouth is too dry, no more liquor. Water please she continued, 
and to me it began to sound a lot like begging. Instead of handing her water, he held out an unlit cigarette. It was then that I noticed the overflowing ashtray, the size of a damned punch bowl, sitting next to her. It was full of butts, had to be over a thousand of them in there. Had she smoked them all herself? I strained my eyes and studied her harder. Her lips were blistered badly, she had been at it for a while. The bartender patiently held out the cigarette, grin never leaving his face, until she finally sighed and took it. He produced a lighter and she took a drag. She began to cough, violently, gagging too. I decided to chime in. Hey man, she doesn't look so hot, and I really don't think she needs another smoke. She looks like she's dying of thirst too. Call the elevator man, she's had enough I think. The bartender turned his big smile on me. Who? Old Nancy here? Nah, Nancy is a trooper, man, smokes a couple packs a day. And as far as her thirst, well, she knew this place was a thirsty sort of dive before she walked in the door. But she wanted to be here. She is getting exactly what she wanted. I walked over to Nancy and placed my hand on her shoulder. Ma'am, if you want to get out of here, I'll walk you over to the elevator. You don't look so great right now. I tried to sound as concerned as a 21-year-old kid could sound. Nancy looked at me and smiled. Oh. I'm fine. Just fine, she said, but her mouth quivered as she spoke. The bartender was watching us like a hawk, still smiling, but his smile no longer looked so friendly. Everything okay? He asked, beaming like a used car salesman. Nancy shakily replied yes. The bartender turned around and in that second Nancy gripped my arm hard, pulled me into the smog that was her breath and whispered, leave while you can, so low that I almost missed it. Her breath was like a chimney, she must have been chain smoking for days. I smoked, and so do most of my friends. And even on nights when we would chain smoke and pound booze until the sun rose, none of us were ever that toxic. I walked over to the man in the business suit, he at least appeared sane. Hey sir, I think that lady over there needs help, I said to him. The man looked at me and laughed. We all need help kid, we're in hell after all, he shouted. As he did this I looked over at the goth girl just in time to see her begin to cut herself, deep and hard from the looks of it. The plain-dressed man sitting next to her began to laugh in a high-pitched tone, almost a giggle, and that was when I noticed that he was masturbating. Only, not in the sense that we all do at home. No, his penis was raw, bloody, torn away in places but he just kept going at it. Stop that! Look at what you're doing to yourselves! I screamed at them. They looked at me and I noticed that the girl was crying but also smiling. Her eyes were practically begging to her self-inflicted pain to stop, yet she just kept cutting. I had seen enough. I reached over and attempted to pull the knife out of her hand. Just then, I felt a strong grip on my shoulder, stronger than anything I had ever felt in my life. It was the bartender. He had come around the bar to grab me. No, no sir, he screamed into my ear. Every patron of hell gets to enjoy their treats without judgment. After all, judgment has already been passed. We exist beyond that now. Let her cut. She loves it after all. Can't you see she loves it? She is smiling ear to ear. The bartender dragged me back to my stool and with great speed was somehow back behind the bar again. Now you wanted secrets, right Kurt? You were bored and wanted more. That is what you came for. Now drink your drink before I beat your fucking face in. Through all of this, he never stopped smiling. He slammed a glass before me. A murky liquid was inside. He grabbed my arm and began to squeeze, the pain becoming unbearable. My mind began to race. This was no bar. This was something. But not a bar. I wasn't ready to believe I was actually in hell, but I knew I was somewhere bad. Drink your drink, sir! He screamed again. And fearing that I would pass out from the pain, I slammed down the liquid in front of me. It tasted horrible. I couldn't describe it then, and I can't now but it was fierce. He let go of me and suddenly the room got much hotter. The light began to flicker and suddenly I was afflicted by knowledge. Things I didn't want to know, things that no one would want to know. My mother had an affair, and the man I had grown up calling dad was in fact not my father at all. I had a brother who died, I never knew that. My boss at work hated me. My grandfather committed suicide. All these years I just thought he died naturally.